Their main rivals in the championship are Munir Khan and Sam Jethwa, who also had a nervous start, concerned about the slippery conditions ahead of them. The conditions, in fact, suited the small Daihatsu special the best, and Adnan Suhail and Absalom Aswani took full advantage and were faster through each of the first three opening stages to take the lead in the category by over a minute. Out of these seven cars in the class, four were VW Golfs, including Gurmit Tethi and Dipinder Kalsi, who normally only enter events based around their hometown of Nairobi. By service, they were lying third, but were then held back when an exhaust valve burned through, and the loss in power put them right off the pace, and they were relegated to finish sixth. Munir Khan and Sam Jethwa lost two minutes to the leaders on the opening slippery stage and only began their attack on stage two. But then they punctured and following an awkward change, all hopes of challenging for a win were lost. They finished fifth, gaining just enough points to keep their championship hopes alive. This was only Nadim Khanna and James Mwangi's second ever event, having only taken up the sport in the previous rally in Meru an event they will not want to remember. They may have a lot to learn, but were already showing signs of their potential, which received a huge boost when they finished fourth. What they don't like is a massive support crew, and the celebrations would go on well after the rally was over. James Karebi and Kimeli Korir had been drawn first in the category and led the field on the road. They are not in the championship race, and were rallying to iron out the car in readiness for an all-out attack next year. For the majority of the event, the engine was misfiring and they were fortunate to finish third. The two-wheel drive itinerary only included five of the 11 stages and with only two stages remaining, Adnan Suhail and Absalom Aswani had victory in sight when they went off sideswiping a tree on the navigator's side. They lost three minutes on the side of the road, dropping them to second. The category lead was picked up by Leonardo Varesi and Rodney Karevi, whose consistency through the stages paid off. They only won one of the five stages, but had relentlessly pushed the Daihatsu on all the others. Their aim from the beginning had been to win, and having judged the correct pace, victory was theirs. This was their third successive category win and are beginning to look invincible. We had done two in a row in 08 and uh, this time we did the hat trick so I'm very happy. I mean it's not something that is done all the time. Yeah. So we are very, we are very glad and it was my birthday today so it was a good present. Yeah. <laughs> Leonardo Varesi and Kigondo Karevi had eventually won by over two minutes. Six of the seven cars entered finished, with the times reflecting the problems encountered rather than the pace. The win extends Leonardo Varesi's lead in the championship to 22 points, but with three events remaining and 60 points still up for grabs, it's far from decided yet. The majority of the field were made up of Division 3 drivers, all looking to claw their way up the standings for the reshuffle at the end of the year. The favourites to win in the group were the Division 3 leaders Galit Paji and Surinder Saddle. But with Imran Mogul making an appearance and Hardy Baresi putting in a strong performance, they were not having it all their own way. Lying second in the championship was Shazar Anwar and Job Jiru in the hybrid Subaru pickup. Their biggest asset is the ability to finish every rally they enter, and it's this consistency that gains the points. On this rally, the underpowered car was simply outpaced by the others, and finishing 18th was all they could manage. They were up against the likes of Sandip Jandu, who had teamed up with Zahir Shah. In the cockpit, Sandip took advantage of Zahir's experience, readily accepting his guidance towards improving his driving skills. They hadn't wrecked all the route, but even on standard notes, made it to the end in 15th place. He's giving me some very nice tips to improve where I used to let it go. I mean, on the browse I used to let go, but he's quite good. So he's encouraging me to step on and drive fast. 
So now you don't want your old navigator back? No, I want him back, but I want him to improve also, you know. It's, it's, it's a good Having returned his uncle's car in one piece after the last rally, Farhas Khan had shown his potential as a driver and had been rewarded with a car of his own. With his dad once again calling the notes, the rally was all about letting the new Evo 8 and finishing 14th was an indication of things to come. Yeah, I'm just learning slowly by slowly. Every stage that I do, every kilometre that I do, it's helping me learn. And it's, it's, giving, me, it's giving me the scares, you know, at times. I think I've, I've not wet myself yet, so that's a good sign. Once again, the two Chana brothers were behind the wheels of the identical Toyota GT4s, just Winder and Ravi ahead on the road. Whilst they matched each other's times, just Winder and Ravi were on average the quicker of the two and were headed for a top 10 placing when a front arm broke and after frantic roadside repairs, they went on to finish 13th. Jasmine hey. Chana and George Jaroga were forced off the early pace when the alternator caused havoc with the electrics and it was only after it had been fixed that they could make an impression. They immediately climbed the leaderboard to finish a very rewarding ninth overall. By the second half of the rally, Galeb Haji and Surinder Saddle were feeling weary, but rallying is an adrenaline-driven sport, and there was plenty of that to keep them on the edge. They knew the division win was out of reach and were now racing for points. Eighth overall and third in the group was better than they expected. Every time Hardy Bressi and Ravi Sonny passed our cameras, they were on the limit, and it must have been elsewhere that they lost time as they certainly appeared to be going as quick as the leaders. Throughout the event, they had been in the top 10 and eventually finished 6th and only need to do this more regularly to upgrade. The fastest of the Division 3 drivers were Imran Mogul and Atul Kochar by a clear 5 minutes. They were matching times with the rally leaders and even won the penultimate stage outright by 30 seconds. If they rallied more often, the championship leaders would have another threat and by finishing fifth overall was proof enough. The problem is I don't have the budget. I run a very small budget, so we only manage to do the rallies when we have the money. It's so much fun taking on these guys, but honestly they are really, really quick. They are. So for me to get to their level, I really need to put in some mileage. In the division table, Galib Haji's lead will be difficult to match. Shaza Anwar holds on to second, with Jasmine Chana moving up to third. It's the top three drivers who will be upgraded, and Imran Mogul and Hadi Bresi are still off the board. The only classic in the event was the familiar Ford Escort RS driven by Aslam Khan, who is not only a veteran driver, but also a benefactor of the championship series. He represents aircraft leasing services, whose helicopter is on standby at each event for safety and rescue. Aslam was being navigated by Ian Freestone, who had originally built the car in the UK. But calling the notes was secondary to the guidance he was giving on how Aslam could get more out of the car. It was good to take Ian with us, uh, because I thought you know, he could probably give me a couple of tips, but uh, it's impossible to do it with base notes, <laughs> if he looks up, you know. Um, he loses out on the on, on the base notes.